We're back today in Cardiff Bay to interview Kirsty Williams, who is the only Liberal Democrat Assembly member in that building over there. We'll be asking her, has the decision to enter the Welsh Government diluted the Welsh Liberal Democrats' voice? We'll be asking her what her priorities are as the Education Secretary, and we'll be asking questions from social media. Let's have a look. Kirsty, as we look into the detail at the turnout for elections, we can see that younger people are much less likely to turn out to vote than older people. So why do you think that is? Uh, I think sometimes uh, people don't feel motivated to go out to vote because they don't think it'll make a difference. Uh, perhaps they think that uh, the decisions and the discussions that politicians are having don't have any relevance. What I find when I speak to young people is that they are intensely political, but sometimes don't recognise it as politics. Mm. They're very interested in issues and maybe sometimes don't make the uh, connection. What's really important, I think, is if uh, we give people the, the skills and the knowledge to participate in the system. And there is some evidence to suggest that if we were to lower the voting age to 16 uh, and get people into the habit of voting at the youngest possible age, then mm. that has benefits for voting participation uh, later on. And you'll mm. be aware that uh, the Welsh Government in its consultation on local government reform is advocating lowering the voting age for local government elections to 16. Now, we know undoubtedly there's a problem when it comes to voter turnout. Now, aside from votes at 16, what do you think are the realistic solutions that we can put in place to bump up those percentage points? Well, I think there are things that individual political parties and the political classes uh, can do uh, to look at new ways of engaging with uh, younger people. Uh, in my role as Cabinet Secretary for Education, what can, what can I do? Well, as you know, we are currently looking at reforming the uh, Welsh curriculum, what's taught in schools. And one of the outcomes that we want from our curriculum is that children and young people leave education as ethical, informed citizens. Mm. Now, you can't be an ethical, informed citizen if you haven't had the opportunity to learn about the political process, to learn about the, uh, the different levels of government, uh, the influence that has on people's lives. So I hope as we go forward and as we develop our new curriculum, we can put a really engaging package of, uh, of programmes together to be able to give young people the knowledge about why it's important to vote, uh, who makes, who's making decisions about their lives and actually how their participation in the political process, not just through voting but through activism in general, can make a difference. Now, you're a member of the Welsh Government. Do you think that decision you took to essentially enter a coalition with the Labour Party has diluted the Liberal Democrat voice in the Senate? Uh, no, not at all. Uh, rather than diluting its voice, it's giving us an opportunity to implement Liberal Democrat policies. And uh, being a politician, it's all about getting things done. Now, there is an honourable tradition, and I did it for 16 years, of providing opposition in a political system. But let me tell you, I got into politics and my party exists to change people's lives. By being part of the government, we're able to do that. Obviously, most obviously in the field of education, where I'm the minister, but the agreement that brought me into government also allows the implementation of Liberal Democrat priorities in other areas. So, for instance, building more affordable homes. Many young people I speak to are very concerned about how they're going to get a foot on the housing ladder, how they're going to be able to afford... Uh, to pay their rent. So issues around affordable housing are very important to young people. Uh, we're, we've been looking at what we can do in terms of uh, agriculture and a small grant scheme. One of the problems that we have in the agricultural sector is that it is dominated by people who are heading quickly towards retirement age. We need to encourage more young people in rural areas to see agriculture as a bi viable option for their future. And that's what we're doing. So being in government, rather than diminishing the voice of Liberal Democrats, brings Liberal Democrat voice and ideology to the very central government. You mentioned your previous sort of role in opposition to the government. Now, now you are in government, can you name any one matter over a devolved area where you and the Labour Party currently disagree? Well, obviously, uh, we, there are differences of emphasis, but what's more important in politics, and one of the reasons why I think people don't vote, uh, and one of the things we need to demonstrate so that people will come and want to vote, is that we, politics too often focuses on what divides, Actually, what the public are interested in is actually politicians getting things done and arguments don't necessarily get things done. Actually, by politicians focusing on what unites them, what they can agree on, and a programme of moving forward is a much more attractive way, I think, of engaging people in politics. But still, is there any one area where you two parties disagree? Well, uh, 
obviously there are we come from different political traditions uh, we have different emphasis and uh, different priorities so for instance it took a Liberal Democrat to convince the Labour administration when we were in opposition to introduce the People Deprivation Grant a scheme that looks to invest in the, in the education of our poorest pupils to reduce the uh, attainment gap that's something that they did particularly uh, didn't see as a priority but by working together we've been able to achieve that we've had a difference uh, of opinion on class sizes for instance not necessarily something the Labour Party would have done but actually being in government we've been able to convince them of the arguments and take things uh, forward so a coalition is sometimes is sometimes about uh, compromise but more importantly than that it is about politicians focusing on what can get done I believe it is the job of a progressive politician to make progress and you can only make progress if you focus on what you can agree on rather than spending all your time worrying about what divides you. Well on the note of progress you are the cabinet secretary for education what things have you been doing for the last well almost a year? Well it is almost a year as you said and it's been incredibly yeah. uh, quick how the year has uh, gone through so uh, so what are our priorities? Well, our, I've described it as a national mission uh, to, uh, to educational reform, a mission that I've invited everybody in Wales to be a part of because I'm aware that as Cabinet Secretary I can't make all the changes and all the difference. So we need to work with our uh, universities, with our schools, uh, and with parents and communities to reform and change education. I want education to, uh, my time as education cabinet secretary to focus on raising standards for all our children, closing the attainment gap between our poorest children and their better off counterparts, establishing a Welsh education system that can be a source of national pride and that enjoys the confidence of parents. I think you'll agree that the PISA results for education that came out last year, I think it was, were pretty disappointing for Wales in that in reading, maths and science, Wales performed worse than all the other uh, UK countries and worse than the OECD average. Now, the onus isn't upon you for, for that uh, result, but the next one probably will be. So what are your targets, your actual specific targets when it comes to PISA? Well, you're absolutely right. The PISA results that were uh, published in December of last year demonstrate to everybody that Welsh education isn't where any of us wanted it to be. Whilst we saw our results uh, in reading uh, stabilise and in maths improve slightly, our science results in particular, uh, which were the focus of that year's PISA test, were particularly disappointing. What's important for me going forward and as we move towards the next set of PISA results is to what can we do uh, to raise attainment. So since the publication of PISA, I've announced a new network of maths excellence to be able to support maths teaching in our schools. We've also announced with the new resources a science and technology centre of excellence. Again, that's to improve the experience of science teaching, uh, not only in secondary school, but actually starting with our very youngest uh, children. Right, that's what you want to do, but is there any specific... Uh, target in terms of perhaps raising Wales's points to the OECD average? Well, of course, uh, what we'll be looking for is an improvement in our scores. Uh, it's, uh, Do you have a figure in mind uh, well, for that? Well, uh, it's uh, difficult to uh, pick a figure out of uh, thin air, but what's important is that we demonstrate progress. But that progress isn't going to happen without concerted action on behalf of Welsh uh, Government. I think. Uh, decisions that we're already involved in, the reform progress we're already involved in, as well as the new emphasis, as I said, on, uh, on uh, really focusing on how we can improve the teaching of maths, how we can improve the teaching of science, will make a difference in years going forward. But let's be absolutely clear, where we are at the moment is not good enough. I don't accept that Welsh children are inher inherently less able than children in England, Scotland, or in Ireland, uh, and I believe our education system can and must perform better. Now, ahead of this interview, I consulted social media to see if anyone had any questions, and we had about 20 odd responses, so I won't subject you to all of them. <laughs> okay. But at Corey Vaughan asks, Do you think it is right that the Liberal Democrats to still push for the UK to remain in the European Union? I think what's Im important to recognise is that the referendum was held and the, uh, the vote uh, was to leave and we respect that. But 
uh, we're an internationalist party. We believe that our country's future would be best served by being a member of the European Union and we're not going to give up on talking about why we believe that would be the best thing. But my party have been quite clear. We understand that uh, the vote uh, was to leave. What's really concerning is that the attitude that the Westminster government has taken as that vote was a vote for a hard Brexit, which is the one that is seemingly being proposed by the government. Uh, that wasn't on the back paper. And we need to make sure that in going forward, we can unite our country again. The referendum has been incredibly divisive in communities across the UK. And whilst I absolutely respect the, the result of that vote, that the views of the 48% also have to be taken into consideration as we take our country, as we take our country forward. But what's important is, when you lose an argument, you simply don't give up on it. Uh, you know, we will continue to advocate why we believe an internationalist can keep working together, mm. and most importantly of all, participation in the single market is the best thing for our country. So, is what you're saying we respect the vote, but? We think the European Union is good, so we press ahead. No, what we're saying, what my party is saying is, of course we respect the vote. It's a democratic vote and the country has made the choice. What does respecting mean? Does it mean that you want the UK to leave the European Union? or? Well, I don't want the UK no. uh, to leave the European Union, but I accept that that is what is going to happen. Mm -hmm. What's important now is that in leaving the European Union, we don't do something that is absolutely disastrous for the economy of our, our country. And that's why I feel very strongly about continued access, free and unfettered access to the single market. Now, as you can imagine, it's a Liberal Democrat interview, so we've had quite a few questions about tuition fees. Mm -hmm. Now, Sean asks, Kirsty, you left the hopes of thousands of students dashed when your party broke your tuition fee pledge. Do you regret the UK party or Nick Clegg in making that pledge in the first place? Well, uh, let me be absolutely clear, no Welsh Liberal Democrat MP broke that pledge. Each of the Welsh Liberal Democrat MPs at the time voted against the tuition fee policy in Parliament. So that this is not a question of the Welsh Liberal Democrats breaking uh, their pledge. What's been important for me in moving forward is in a devolved context, and um, tuition fee policy of course is uh, devolved, is that we've been able to actually honour the pledge on which Welsh Liberal Democrats stood at the last Assembly elections. And we're seeing that put into practice by uh, the implementation of the recommendations of the Diamond Review. Uh, Helen Mary Jones, the Helen Mary Jones, <laughs> asks, uh, when your uh, time as Cabinet Secretary for Education comes to an end, what do you hope to look back on and see as your uh, major achievements? Uh, I will uh, look back and want to see a, uh, a rise in standards in Welsh education. I want to see a closing of the gap between our poorest pupils and what they achieve in school and their better off counterparts. And I want to see the Welsh education system being a source of national pride mm -hmm. and an education system that people want to be teachers in. Iwan Rees on Twitter again asks, as a member of Carwin's cabinet, are you still bound by uh, collective responsibility? Uh, yes, yes I am. Okay, and now for a quick fire round, be as blunt as you oh, possibly right. can okay. and honest uh, as well. So, voter 16, yay? Yes, absolutely. Uh, compulsory voting, yay or nay? Uh, not convinced. Okay, favourite Prime Minister in the last century? In the last century, uh, David Lloyd George. Okay, Tories or Labour? Uh, neither, Liberal Democrats. Okay, is immigration a problem? Immigration has proven to be good for our country, but we have to recognise that some people uh, feel concerned about it. In addressing their concerns, it's really, it's really important that we don't blame the other. If people are worried about their jobs, then it's the job of government to do something about creating jobs. If people are worried about housing, it's the job of government to ensure there's enough housing to go around. When governments fail to do that, people will look to blame other people. Okay. Are you confident Tim Farron will deliver electoral success? Well, they've just won the by-election in Richmond and we haven't done that for a while. Okay. Um, as part of these interviews, I've been asking party leaders to sum up another party using one word. Uh, Leanne Wood said you kept with thugs. Carwyn Jones said Pike Henry was unrealistic. Andrew Arty Davis said uh, the Labour Party was more abound. And Neil Hamilton said the Conservatives were history. Now, you're in a slightly more awkward position than all of them. Can you sum up 
the Labour Party using one word? It's possible to do so. Uh, these are my uh, colleagues and uh, it's really important that we work together. But uh, if I could sum them up, I would say they have proven themselves remarkably collegiate. Okay. And sum up your own party in one word. Uh, hopeful. Okay. And finally, in 30 seconds or less, can you make your pitch to young people in saying why they should select the Liberal Democrats at election time? The Liberal Democrats offer a really hopeful future uh, for this country, uh, one that is based on the principles of openness, fair, fairness and acceptance, and at a time where many other political parties are abandoning that ground. It is the Liberal Democrats that is the only UK-wide party that is offering that vision for our country. Christy Williams, you're welcome.